Welcome back guys to another game and this one was just crazy. As you probably saw um, maybe by the title, the entirety of this match took place within the Typhoon Zone. The entire match was inside this building. Yet we've just started the match and trust me we are going to be here for the long haul. That's how just intense and crazy and just wild it was. Like I think the furthest we get from it is like walking around the outside of it. You know like the perimeter. So yeah this like the entire thing is pretty much in this entire space. So we started off here uh, dealing with this uh, derby very very close situation there. Of course, those Darby's always forget that you can just rush through their uh, firewall. It's weird, sometimes you can rush through the firewall using the shield to take no damage, and sometimes it will damage you. I don't know, in Season 2, it's strange for us Momo players, because there are some things that hurt us through our shields that didn't in Season 1. But they don't always hurt us. I don't know, it's kind of weird. But yeah, interesting comp we have here, you got me, Momo, um, you know, fairly close range character. And you've got um, Sato, who's Kirishima, again, fairly close range. Oh, man, I freaking love that Bakugo outfit. You know what's funny, guys? The Bakugo school outfit is the outfit I've been waiting the most for um, since this game's beta. Since the game's beta. I haven't got it yet, though. And then, of course, we've got a Pink Daddy using a Compress for the uh, last of the composition. A very, very strange composition, I won't lie. But, uh, you know, it's a very strange match. So a lot of this match was just like people taking care of themselves. It's like every man for himself in this in this place. Yeah, that was a very slippery move by that. Look at that man. That's another thing as well. Like this wasn't like this in season one. People now can roll through the Momo shield. It drives me absolutely bonkers. Look at this. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's not right, is it? We gotta do something about that one. Like, I'm pretty... I never witnessed that in Season 1, except from, like, the first week. And then after that, like, I never saw that ever again. But, yeah, I definitely am not a fan of that. Being able to, uh, dodge through the shield. It just looks ridiculous. And don't get me wrong, if she had complete and total control of her run, then maybe I could square it. But she can't, you know, spin around as if it were uh, an owl's neck. You don't have full control over that shield movement the way, you know, you do your character's movement here. When they're just running around. You know, in the match when this happened, I thought that looked weird. Let me see that again. He just vanished. And then he just turned up. That's a weird one. But yeah, because she can't exactly, you know, spit. Look at that. See, that's as good a circle as you're ever going to get with her. If she could do really tight turns, then I'd be saying, okay, fair enough then. Let them dodge through it. But she can't. So I think because she can't do that, it's, um, they shouldn't have any right to dodge straight through the shield. In my correct opinion. <laughs> in my correct opinion. You guys like that. I bet I bet some of you are going to use that in real life. At work or with your friends. You're going to say that one. So we're still fighting in this building. I was not joking with you guys. Still fighting in this damn typhoon zone. Like this match was a typhoon. We haven't stopped fighting. This could be pound for pound one of the most action oriented matches on YouTube for uh, My Hero Ultra Rumble. There's not a single... Well, we're still a, still, still a two-man. We haven't been able to get Sato up yet. Like, there has not been a second to chill out. Saigo this.
and the circle just keeps on closing slowly but surely. The Momo bag. What hero and villain do you think would make a good team? Like as a duo. Not as in this game, I mean just lore wise. You know, like whose quirks from the hero side and from the villain side would go together to be really, really handy. The crazier or like the less, the less well known the duo, the better. So if you're going to be like, uh, Shigaraki and Deku. Yeah, fuck off with that. Obviously, <laughs> but if you t tell me, tell me a duo of villain and hero that would make a good team by their powers. That isn't so obvious. So yeah, look, fighting outside here is as far away as we get from the typhoon zone, and technically that's still the typhoon zone. Like we, I, I think if we went over towards the middle part over there, that that water slide, I think maybe we have a uh, maybe maybe it's not you know, viable to say so, but because we didn't go that far, and we really, like I did say earlier, we really just fought on the perimeter outside here, it still is. You know, those, how do you guys feel about Aizawa this season? Aizawa's really picked up this, uh, the game. He's been a real problem in some matches, you know. Aizawa's been a real problem in some of these, uh, some of these matches in season two, because he can confirm the entirety of his gamma damage on you just by catching you with that so he can do all of that damage to you by catching you with one alpha you know obviously he can get interrupted but typically if he gets it he's probably not going to be interrupted so yeah he's a, he's a dangerous lad he's a dangerous lad and of course don't get me started on the on the quirk removal the fact that he can just like stop you in your tracks, he's like, nice shield, bitch. It, exactly right there, as I'm saying it, he just did it. The fact that he can just stop you right there and then, you know, puts you in such a big uh, bit of trouble. And again, like I said, if he catches you with one alpha, that's basically like him catching you with a move that takes like 200 of your shields. So he's very, very dangerous right now. Between, uh, between that gamma with the alpha setup and... The quirk stoppage, yeah, he can be a very, very frustrating character to deal with. But you know, he's cool. He's cool right now. Like, Aizawa's been terrible for a for a good while, so it's nice to see him have some manner of viability. The thing I'll say is when dealing with these Aizawas is once they stop your quirk once, you know that they can't do it again. If they stop doing it, that is. Um, you know they can't do it again for a little bit, so that's your time to push them. But then, again, second tip to don't come at them so straight because if you uh, if you make your path too easy for them, even though they might not be able to stop your quirk anymore, they'll just uh, latch onto you with their alpha, and then you're going to take a face full of gamma anyway. So don't fall into the trap of hey he's got no quirk removal anymore. Let me run right at him because then he's just going to catch you. <laughs> you know he's going to catch you with his. Uh, his alpha, and then he's gonna make you taste every every little uh, bit of that cloth he's rocking. We have not stopped. When I told you this is the most action oriented match possibly in uh, <laughs> in YouTube MHUR history, I was not joking. This very well could be it. They definitely, um, definitely played with Momo's shield. They definitely played. There's some unspoken stuff going on with because they didn't put anything in patch notes about Momo's shield. But I'm telling you, man, it's different. I'm telling you, it's different. They just didn't put it on the uh, on the patch notes. It's different. Whether it's how people react to it or how it is itself, something's changed about it. Just from the fact that people can roll through it, like that is complete, like that was not happening. At least not happening to a degree that was noticeable. And I'm saying that generously because I didn't notice it, except from again, like the first week of the game, that's when I saw it like a few times and then after that I never saw it again. I love hitting someone twice with the same shield attack. Just feels so satisfying, you know. 
Look how unlucky that was. It ended right as he did that. <laughs> that one, that one was so annoying when it hit me. I was like, come on, man. As Biden would say, come on, man. I get a very, 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 very weird sense of satisfaction from consuming a potion while walking off a building. I don't know why, it just, it just really makes me happy to do. Does anyone else feel the same way? It just feels like, I don't, I don't even know what it feels like, it just feels, feels good. It's like, yeah, this doesn't make any sense, but I'm doing it, <laughs> you know? Can you picture yourself right now trying to drink from a Coke bottle? while jumping, sorry, while stepping off a building. How much of that drink do you think you're actually going to get? How much of that drink do you actually think you're going to get? I think that's what makes it so funny for me. Because it's such an, <laughs> such an absurd idea to drink something while walking off the ledge of a building. It's so hilarious. Yeah, I told you guys, this, this entire fight was Typhoon Zone City. It's so weird how we started there, kept fighting all the way there, and the circle led us to essentially Typhoon Zone City as well. Why did I call it Typhoon Zone City? Um, Typhoon Zone. And it ended the game in the pocket. Great loading screen. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that match. Um, yeah. What really? Uh, what else is there really to say? 6.5k damage. In the Typhoon Zone alone. It started there. And it ended there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that match. It was a pretty high level game as well. There's good players in there. Um, they knew what they were doing. We knew what we were doing. But... You know, thankfully it turned out our way. So, thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. See you soon.